by its own tendency to enjoy more and to move towards more and more, the mind reaches the finer levels of mantra and then transcends and gets to that. This is our whole principle of TM, that mind by itself, by its own tendency, reaches the field of pure awareness. Hmm? Naturally, our, our experience shows we do not make an effort to minimize mental activity. We do not make an effort. We don't even think. But we put the mind to, a, to an effortless activity and then the activity of the mind becomes less and less and less and less and less and less and the mind stops being active and yet remains alert. That remaining alert without activity is pure awareness. This happens because mind wants to grow to unboundedness. And this is due to the motivation of the force of evolution. Force of evolution wants everything to grow. And when the mental activity is given over to the influence of the force of evolution, then the force of evolution works out the destiny of the mind takes it to the goal of all its aspirations, infinite bliss, unboundedness, eternity. This is transcendental awareness. Hmm? So, in transcendental meditation, the force of evolution takes over. Hmm? It takes over the mind. It takes over the individuality. and when the force of evolution, which is conducting the destiny of the whole cosmos, whole manifest universe, when that takes over the individuality, then the individuality is directly under the care or protection and influence of universality. Individuality is directly under the protection of universality and therefore the mind experiences that unbounded awareness. Mm. This is the blessing of the four directly placing our life on the level of this force of evolution. Now when this has happened, what makes this state of, 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 of affairs lose its value? Why does the mind and how can the individuality then come back to, to, to its original individual state which is limited in time and space? How can it happen? It happens because the physical aspect of the individuality does not cooperate, does not cooperate. It is not cultured enough to maintain or to sustain spontaneously that, that universal structure of life. It cannot sustain it. It bounces back. It just comes back. And then, and then goes back. For a moment it has it and then comes back. We know from all these experiments that the, there is a specific physiological condition which corresponds with that state of pure consciousness. We have seen every state of mind has a corresponding physiological condition of the nervous system. Now, the nervous system has a specific 
kind of physiological structure when the mind is in that state of pure awareness. Mind, we say, the nervous system reaches a state of restful alertness when the mind reaches this state of pure awareness, which on the mental level also is a state of restful alertness. This pure awareness is also a state of restful alertness. So when the, when the mind reaches this state of restful alertness, it reaches this state because the body reaches a corresponding state of restful alertness. Hmm? All the transformation and all the modification in the physiology that are conducive to maintain this state of restful alertness on the part of the nervous system, they have already been uh, supplied to the nervous system. The whole situation is conducive for the maintenance of this pure awareness on the mental level. But when the system is resting so deeply, some deep-rooted stress may start to unstress. And this unstressing naturally creates some physical disturbance. Now the physical nervous system is no longer restfully alert. Its alertness of the restful state is disturbed because some activity has cropped in. And what is responsible for this activity? Oh, 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 huh? What is responsible for this activity? Some abuse that has been put in the nervous system some time back. The nervous system was abused. Some stress was was put in the nervous system. And now, when the nervous system is in this restful alertness, that impurity wants to go out. The nervous system wants to throw that impurity because this restful alertness is so rewarding, it's so fulfilling that the impurity which could not be located before comes to vision, comes to our awareness and it's thrown out. In this process of throwing out the, the impurity, some activity starts and this activity disturbs that restful alertness on the physical level. And when the physical is no more restfully alert, the mind cannot maintain its restful alertness. It, the, it must rise into, into an impulse corresponding to this activity which has started on the body, on the nervous system. So, even though this break of the restful alertness on the part of the nervous system is conducive to the maintenance of this pure awareness for longer time, but this process in itself has momentarily disturbed that state of restful alertness on the part of the mind. Pure awareness is disturbed momentarily for the time being, but it has been disturbed. But with that disturbance, the chances have been created that this pure awareness will stay, will, will find no more, no more barrier to its continuance. And in this way, one after another, very deep-rooted stresses in the nervous system are spontaneously released and resistances cleared out. And when all the resistances are gone, then there is no barrier for eternally continuing 
uh, for that pure awareness to continue eternally. And then the system is, we say, completely pure. It has no. Say when you build a house and you are there, maybe the builders have left some dust in some corner, some corner. When you are comfortably living, suddenly your, your vision goes to that dust in that corner. You take it off. <laughs> and then that noise of the hoover disturbs the silence and the comfort. But you know that when, that, that's for a little while. Once it's gone, then you'll be free. Then the mind will not go there, you know, to that dust, to that dirt. And one after the other, things little by little taken off, and then when the whole house is absolutely neat and clean, then actually you start enjoying the home unrestrictedly. Otherwise something to be done here, and then you get engaged in that. That means when you are engaged in maintaining the house, then you are not enjoying the house. Then you are maintaining the house, then you are devoted to the house then the house doesn't get devoted to you. Instead of the house being devoted to you, supplying absolutely comfortable living, then you become for the house. Just like that, as long as there are restrictions in the nervous system, these stresses and strains, which do not allow full value of life to be lived, then you keep on devoting yourself to unstressing these and stressing these, then the life is not yours completely. Then lot of you are for life and then some of life is for you. In order that whole of life is for you, you have to create a situation that you don't have to devote yourself to life. You are supported by the fullness of life. And for that, we meditate and live good life, do things that are conducive to nervous system. We do everything that is conducive to nervous system and don't do anything that will impair the functioning of the nervous system. We just don't do anything that impairs the uh, smooth functioning of the nervous system. Morning and evening, good meditation, one-pointedness in our purpose, the joy of life should be there. And the joy is in the unfoldment of our creativity. The, 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 the joy that comes in devotion to work, it is spontaneously is absorbing. It's so delightful. You just don't d d look here and there and there and there. And this is when the inner happiness is blossoming. When 